for all the students of class 11 out there greetings to you today being your first session let me introduce myself to you i am kushi your prep school english teacher standing before you i welcome you to learn english core i am sure you have watched my previous videos wherein I did speak about the portions that has to be covered for the academic year 2021. So today, I will take you through the lesson, your first lesson from your textbook Hornbill and it is the portrait of the lady. Before that, few instruction. I want you to pay complete attention throughout the session Pause the videos wherever need be. Mark or note down the important points. After the session, please open your textbook and read the textbook thoroughly. It's important that you get connected to the link in the description box below. All the notes material, question and answers, assignment pertaining to the letter, or any kinds of updates and corrections, you will find it over there. With this, let me take you through the lesson, the portrait of a lady. What is the lesson all about? What is that I will be discussing today? I will discuss the author, the title and the theme of the lesson. What is the significance and what is the moral of the lesson? There are few words and expressions in the lesson and a short summary, the expected question and answers and the conclusion of the lesson. So dear children, all your prose lessons while I am handling, please remember I will go in this methodology wherein you will get to know who is the author, what is the title, theme, significance, moral of the lesson, what is the summary? What is the lesson all about? What is the glossary or the words and expressions in context in the textbook? And also the expected question and answers and how do we conclude? What does the conclusion of the lesson state? So this is what I'm going to discuss today in the lesson. So who is the author of the lesson, the portrait of a lady? It is Kushwan Singh. An Indian author, he was a politician, he was a lawyer, a diplomat and a journalist. His interest or his passion for writing started during the period of partition of India. So what is that he is trying to tell us in this lesson, the portrait of the lady? He is trying to draw a portrait of his grandmother. He unfolds a special bonding and a special relationship with his grandmother. Also, he tells the reader about all the characters of his grandmother and her daily activities. So, moving forward, let's understand what is the title of the lesson. When I say title, it's the name given to the lesson. So what is the name given to the lesson here? It is a portrait of a lady. Now what do you mean by a portrait? Portrait is a sketch. It is a drawing of a person or it is a kind of something which is engraved which speaks about the character of that particular person. And lady here. So the author is trying to portray something about a lady. So who is the lady here? The lady is the grandmother. So understand that the author is portraying his grandmother and hence the title a portrait of a lady. So he intends to tell us about the character sketch of his grandmother and she has got a lot of ladylike characteristics. And thus, portrait, which says a word play on a character sketch. So, thus the title, the portrait of a lady. Further, let's see what is the theme of the lesson. You need to know the difference between a title and a theme. Title is always the name given to the story. And the theme 
is based on what the story revolves around. That is the theme. So in a portrait of the lady, the theme is all about innocence and friendship. The story revolves around love, connection, kindness, selflessness and respect and acceptance. It's very evident while you go through the lesson that you will find what is innocence, friendship, selflessness, connection, kindness, respect and acceptance. So this is the theme. So when we talk about the significance of the lesson, it makes us understand the perceptions that change according to the situation and circumstances. So here it portrays the grandson's perception of his grandmother and how their bond, how their relation, how that warmth what they had undergoes a change in a period of time. To repeat, it portrays the changes that happens during the phase of life. Here, it is between the grandmother and the grandson. So moving forward, there is a moral that we get to know. So what is the moral? There are two things. First one, it throws light on the need for companionship felt by our elders. It's very important to know that having elders in our homes, they need companionship. That is the first moral we get to know in this lesson. And the second one, not only in humans, but even birds and animals are very emotional. The second one is, we get to know, not only humans are emotional, but even birds and animals are emotional. Thus, knowing the title, theme, significance and the moral of the story, let's move forward to understand few of the expressions and the words and context from the textbook. Have a look at the first one. The thought was almost revolting. Revolting means something which is not believable, something which is a little difficult to believe or hard to believe. So here, the thought that the author's grandmother was actually young and pretty was very difficult for the author to believe. So the thought was almost revolting means hard to believe the thought that the grandmother was young and pretty. Moving forward, expansion of pure white serenity. It's a comparison of a landscape, a winter landscape. Expansion means something which is spread out. So how does a winter landscape look for you? Lot of peace, lot of calmness, isn't it? So refers to calm, peaceful and serene. So here the author compared the looks of his grandmother to a peaceful winter landscape. Moving forward, a turning point. A turning point is something where drastic changes will happen. There was a situation where there was a turning point in the relationship of the grandmother and the author. So turning point means the point where a drastic change took place. Next, accepted her seclusion with resignation. Seclusion means you stay away, you are secluded and resignation means you are retiring from your regular activity. So the grandmother accepts a secluded life and then loses touch with a grandson. Frivolous rebukes. Rebukes means a sharp expression of disapproval and frivolous rebuke means lovingly you are scolding, not on a serious note. So scolding someone lovingly, not in a serious note. In this lesson, the grandmother would have a lot of sparrows sitting around her. So though sometimes it was irritating for her, it was disturbing for her, she would not shoo them away. Instead, she would lovingly scold them and have them around. So these are three of the expressions moving forward. A veritable bedlam of chirruping. Now veritable means 
something, an expression where you emphasize something positively. And bedlam of chirping. Bedlam means a lot of noise, confusion. And chirruping. Chirruping means you have heard the birds chirping, right? There's a small difference between chirp and chirrup. Now, chirp is a short, loud turn. A series of chirps is called as chirping. So, a veritable bedlam of chirping means noise, confusion, chaos by the sparrows scattering around the grandmother in the veranda. Next, the sagging skin of dilapidated drum. Dilapidated means deteriorated. So, the drum was in a very bad condition. So, it was shabby and it was deteriorated. The condition of the drum was in a very pathetic state. So, these were few of the expressions that are very evident while you read the lesson. So, kindly connect it to the context and understand as you read through. Let's move further to the summary of the lesson now. When I talk about the summary, you will find an introduction in the beginning of your chapter. Followed by there is a character sketch of the grandmother and then the early childhood of the author and then there is a turning phase in that author's life and lastly the passing away of the grandmother. So I have divided your summary into introduction, character sketch of the grandmother, there is a period where the author has a very lovely childhood and there is a turning point and the last phase is passing away of the grandmother. The lesson begins with an introduction. The author Kushwan Singh tells us that his grandmother looks like everybody else's grandmother. He also tells us that he knew her since 20 years. She was old but very beautiful. But the people tell him that once upon a time she was young and pretty and also she had a husband. It was a little hard for the author to believe because to look at his grandfather he would wonder how did the grandmother being so very pretty had an husband who was a little shabby looking. So further he talks about his grandmother. So let's see what does the author talk about his grandmother. He says, my grandmother is like everybody's grandmother. And then he says, he knew her for 20 years. People tell him that she was once very pretty and young. She also had a husband. It was hard for the author to believe. Further, the author speaks about the grandfather. In the drawing room, above the mantelpiece, there was a grandfather's portrait which was hung. So, how does the grandfather look? He says he would wear big turbans and loose fitting clothes. So, his grandfather would wear big turbans with loose fitting clothes. Along with that, he had long white beard that was covering the complete best part of his chest. So he had long white beard which was all over his chest. He looked 100 years old when compared to this grandmother and he was wondering how did he ever have a wife and children. That means to say the grandfather looked as though he has many grandchildren. So this is how Kushwan Singh tells us about his grandfather and about his grandmother. Let me start with a character sketch of the grandmother. The author's grandmother was pretty old. The author knew his grandmother for the past 20 years. She was very fond of talking about the game she would play while she was a child. His grandmom was short but fat and a Slightly she was bent. Also, her face was all with wrinkles. There was crisscrossed wrinkles on her face. 
she wore white clothes which were spotless and then she would always keep her hand in her waist that is because she had to balance her stoop. Stoop is what? She was a little bent. So she would always keep her hand on her waist. Moving forward, she had silver locks scattered untidily. Silver locks means the grey hair which was scattered all over her face. She had puckered and pale face. She had a dull face and puckered means tightly folded. Okay, And then she couldn't be older. The author says she couldn't have been older than what she was looked. But though she was old, though she was not that pretty, however she was in her younger days, but still she was always beautiful. The author always considered her to be very beautiful. Next, her lips always moved with prayers. She would always say prayers which were inaudible, means she was murmuring the prayers all the while and she had this rosary. I hope you know what's a rosary. It's a bead where you count the beads and you say your prayers. So the grandmother would say a prayers with a rosary in her hands. Lastly, she was compared to the winter landscape in the mountain. I had just explained about the expression, isn't it? This is an expression of pure white serenity. So this is how the author's grandmother looked. Children, you can expect a question on the character sketch of the grandmother. So you need to say that she was short, she was fat, bent, she would hold her hand, she was always saying a prayer, she had the rosary, then she was wearing spotless white clothes and then she had a pale face, her face was all wrinkled and put all these points and finally end up to say that she was compared to the landscape of a mountain. It was like a pure white serenity. So this is the character sketch of the grandmother. Next, let's see what was the author's childhood. So, the author spent his childhood with his grandmother. The reason being, his parents were in the city trying to settle down and then he was left behind with his grandmom in the village. So, what is that such an important thing between the grandmother and the author? You need to know their relationship. Okay, so what was the relationship that was built during his early childhood with his grandmom? There are few of this. The grandmom and the author were very good friends. Since the parents lived in the city, they started building their relation. The grandmother would wake him up every day morning, give him a bath and dress him up to school. She would say the morning prayers and wanted the author also to learn the prayer. But did the author learn the prayer? No. He would always listen to the grandmom's prayer because he loved her voice. But he never bothered to learn. So these are few of the points which I have put there. Make a note. They were good friends. Parents were in city and hence they lived together. He was woken up every day in the morning. And she helped him to get ready to school. She gave him a bath and dressed him. And she would have her regular prayers which she expected the author to know about it. But the author did not bother. But definitely he listened to the prayers. To continue, few more to go. The grandmom would always wash the slate, keep the chalk piece plastered to the slate and also give him a small ink pot and a pen and she would make chapatis for him with butter and sugar and she also would carry few thick chapatis which were stale to feed the street dogs. So have a glance at it. She prepared him to go to school by giving him a slate, ink pot and the pen and his breakfast and also carried few for the stray dog and walked along with him to school. 
This was a part of author's childhood. Moving further, let's see how were they going to school together. Now, the grandmom would take the author to school every day. This was because the school was attached to the temple. And who was teaching in the lessons? It was the priest. And what was the grandmother doing during the author's lesson? She would read the scriptures inside the temple. And the author was made to sit in a row with other children and recite the prayers and the lessons. So quickly have a glance at it. Both of them walked to school together. The school was next to a temple and the priest taught the lessons. The children were made to sit in rows and they used to recite the prayer and the lesson. Summer to go, I told you, the grandmother would sit and read the scriptures there. Both of them would finish the school together and walk back home. And then the stray dogs would meet them regularly and follow them home too. The grandmother would give them the stale chapatis and the author would find the dogs always fighting and growling for the stale chapatis. So these are a few of the points that you need to remember how the grandmother helped the author to go to school. Next is the turning point in this lesson. What does the turning point mean? There is a drastic change. So what happens? The parents of the author were well settled in the city. Now they wanted the author and the grandmother to shift back to the city. Things changed. Author was sent to a city school where the teaching were in a different methodology. The grandmother was not okay because she could not follow the lessons in English and science. And also even a simple music class was not okay with her because she always thought that music means the beggars would come and sing. So she was not okay with the kind of education the author was getting. Though she was not okay, she accepted it in silence. So have a look at it. The parents call them to the city and then how the type of education changed and how the grandmom was lost in the city life and then she was disturbed with her music lessons but still she was, her silence was a kind of disapproval. Next what happened? After the school phase, the author had to go to the university. Now he was a grown up adult. Of course, he got a separate room. He got involved in his studies. His bond towards the grandmother was a kind of, you know, getting uh, separated. So the grandmother felt that she was secluded from her grandson and was trying to just accept it the way it came. Let's see that. When I went to the university means when the author went to the university, the first one is he was given a room of his own. The common link of the friendship between the grandmom and the author was snapped. But the grandmother accepted the seclusion with a resignation. I told you she retired from all her previous activity and she accepted her resignation. Her habits from then changed. She was so busy behind the author seeing all his needs and necessity but right now since he was in a different world he could manage on his own the habits of the grandmother also changed next what happened the grandmother's habits completely changed what were the changes in the grandmother she started spinning from morning till sunset she would just spin next is she would recite prayers non-stop her lips and her mind were reciting prayers afternoon she would take a break she made friends with few sparrows feeding them that was the happiest hour of the grandmother why do you think it was happiest because the chirping of the birds 
got her happiness. There was some noise, there was some confusion, there was some distraction for her. So that became her happiest hour. But the rest of the days, she would just spin, recite prayer. But the rest of the day, she would non-stop spin her wheels and then recite her prayers. So the changes in the grandmother's habit to be noted down. The first one being spinning the wheel. The second one is reciting the prayer. And the third one is feeding the sparrows. So this was a regular activity. Next, after university, the author decides to go abroad for his higher studies. Now this does not go well with her grandmother at all. But did she express? No. So what happens when he went abroad? She was definitely upset that five years her grandson was going away. She sees him in the railway station and kisses him saying bye. She only has prayers in her mind and in her lips. Her fingers are busy with rosary. So you have to understand, though there is a lot of emotions that the grandmother will be missing her grandson while is away abroad, she will not show it. Instead, she keeps herself busy with her habits of prayer, but of course, she does send him happily abroad. So we need to understand here, though the grandmother has got so much of emotion that she's going to miss her grandson, she will not show it. Instead, she will send him happily abroad, but continue with her habits to keep herself occupied. The next part of the lesson is the last phase of the lesson. The author comes back after his higher studies, but by then his grandmother is deteriorating day by day. His coming back from abroad was the happiest moment of her life for the grandmother. So she rejoiced with feeding the sparrows more and more. And one day she got pretty tired and she was fallen ill. Though the doctor said that she is going to be fine, but she herself knew that the chapter of her life was coming to an end and she stopped praying. She calls the women of the neighborhood to beat the drums and sing songs for her. And then lastly, she does a praying in the bed and collapses. So what is the last phase? The last phase is, so let's see what happens. The author returns home and the grandmother meets the author in the station. But the author say she didn't even appear to be even a day older. She was the same. But her prayers were non-stop and out of happiness, she started feeding the sparrows for a longer time. So, so that was a kind of celebration for the grandmother to have a grandson back home. But that evening came a change. She was a little not well. The doctor said that she will be fine. But what happens? She did not pray that day. Instead, she called for the woman and asked them to sing along with the drums. And then the songs were all related to warriors coming home. And for the first time that the author says that he has seen his grandmother not pray. Further, it was the last day of life for the grandmother. She got up ill, though the doctor and everybody said that she's going to be fine. She fell deep inside that that was the last few hours, the last few pages of the chapter of her life. So she did not want to waste her time. She continued to pray, but sadly, she slowed down. Her rosary from her hand fell off and she died. Have a look at it. Though she got up ill in the morning and everybody said that she would be fine, she felt something very different. She was very sure that that was the last few hours of the chapter of her life and she omitted her prayers. 
Further, she did not want to waste her time. She peacefully lay in her bed and then recited her prayers and lastly the rosary fell from her hands. She was found dead. She was lifted from her bed and all the customs were made. So while the corpse was kept outside the house, all the birds scattered around her but nobody heard any kind of chirping noise. So you understand here that animals too have got emotion. They have realized that the grandmother is no more. So they silently sat around the dead body and then there were bread pieces thrown for them as food but none of the sparrow even wanted to have a piece of bread and when the dead body was lifted for further customs the birds also flew along. Next day morning the sweeper comes back and sweeps the breadcrumbs and puts it to the dustbin. That is very sad to know that even the sparrows being birds they had that emotion and they had that feeling. So this is the story of the portrait of the lady. So what did we understand? During our journey of life, we do get bonded, we do build relationship and sometimes it undergoes a change where relationships fall apart and by the time we realize that we need to set the things back, it's all done and over. So that was a summary of the lesson, the portrait of a lady. What did we understand here? The author has told us about his relationship with the grandmother, how during his journey of life they fell apart and by the time the author realized about it, it was too late. Going further, the most important part of today's session is about your question and answers. What are the questions that you will be tested related to this lesson? Always remember, you will have two types of lesson. One is a short answer questions and other one is a long answer question. Your short answer question is going to be for 40 to 50 words and your long answers are going to be for 120 to 150 words. Now your short answer questions will look like that. It is all for two marks. You may have a question on why did the city schooling so disturbing for the grandmother? What is about the music class? Why was the grandmom so disappointed about the music class? And then how did the sparrows express their emotion on the last day? What are the few habits of the grandmother that you got to know in the lesson? What kind of image emerges of the grandmother? And what is the moral of the story? These are few but you can expect lots more like this. Going to your long answers which are for 6 marks. Very important is the character sketch of the grandmother. This is very important. The next one, do you agree that the grandmother is a strong person? If so, how? Next, what is the turning point in the lesson, the portrait of the lady? And what are the odd ways that the grandmom died? What is the last phase, the last day? What happened? And then what was the changing relationship of the author and the grandmother? Dear children, remember that just knowing the summary of the lesson is not important. Dear children, remember that you have to read the lesson very thoroughly from your textbook. While doing so, read in between the lines, learn to think beyond the textbook, learn to criticize, analyze, comprehend, elaborate your answers. So these are few of the short and long question and answers. As the conclusion part of the lesson, what is that you understood today? What is that you learned out of this lesson? 
we understood and learned that during the journey of everyone's life, we build attachments, we build a bond, we build a relationship. And at every phase of life, companionship becomes very important. We also saw the difference of lifestyle in a village and in a city. And also being dependent or the dependence either in the young age or in the middle age or in the old age, though it is a different kind of dependence, it is a must, each of us are dependent on others. And the habits, of course, change during the phase of life. Lastly, freedom is a must for every individual, whether he is a child or is a grown-up adult or is somebody very old, that freedom for one is important. So this being the conclusion, I hope dear children, you have understood what is the lesson, the portrait of the lady. That's it for today. To conclude, I hope you have understood the lesson, the portrait of the lady. To recollect the author, title, theme, significance, moral, the summary of the story, question and answers and the conclusion. Also, remember not to forget to open your textbook and read the lesson. I repeat, reading the lesson from the textbook is very important. Also remember, make time for the ones who are dependent on you. See you in my next session, Notice Writing. Until then, all smiles to you. Bye-bye.